Is farming of the devil? Welcome to Answers News for Monday, July 10th, 2023. Hey guys, I'm Brian Osborne. That is Rob Webb, known as the Rocket Man, Bodie Hodge, the Book Man. And this is Answer. Well, you do, your name's on like half the books in the ministry. So yeah. I'm just calling you the Book Man. And then the just, book Brian. Man. Just, just Brian. Just Brian. Just Brian Osborne. <laughs> and uh, this is Answers News. We're doing a biblical commentary on the articles of today, some science issues, social issues. We're going to dive right into this. And the first article we're looking at is this one. The Civilization Myth, How New Discoveries Are Rewriting Human History. Subtitle, in an evolutionary eye blink, our species has gone from hunting and gathering to living in complex societies. We need to rethink the story of this monumental transition. And so this is our weekly installment of this find or this idea changes everything, everything. We got to rewrite evolution. the whole book. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, you know, I get nervous about that. Every time I see somebody saying, oh, we're going to rewrite human history, hold it. Written history has already been written. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a book called the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when we start with the Bible, that is God's absolute word to us. We know what happened in the past. The problem mm -hmm. is we're in a culture where people want to reject the Bible. Right. And as soon as you reject the Bible, you can get anything. And that's, that's the right. problem. They, they, they change things. They rewrite stories. But you can and, get this, uh, right? You get stuff like this. It comes out of an evolutionary worldview, which is a dominant false history in our culture. And it's interesting mm -hmm. you say that because what they start off with, the general gist of the article is that, well, according to evolutionary narrative, humans have been around for hundreds of thousands of years as basically hunters and gatherers. And so we kind of move around different herds, killing them, kind of living off the land, climate changes, different areas, make you move to different areas. But then they say around 10,000 years ago, everything began to change. Now, for the first hundreds of thousands of years, there is no written history according to them. That's all <laughs> their guess. But then 10,000 years ago, people began to start planting crops and to have farms. And then when they did that, they stayed in one place for a while. And then they built villages and towns and they invented stuff like writing and money and gunpowder, which is all written history, by the way. And within just a few thousand years, an evolutionary blink of an eye, you have empires and factories mushroomed all over the world. And of there course, go. God disagrees with a lot of that history. He does, that's right. But by the yeah. dumb luck of evolution, I mean, all that happened. Can you believe it? Yeah. Just all no, that. I can't actually. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, throughout this whole article, they're struggling to have the answers because basically, like, like Brian was saying, uh, the whole story goes that we were hunters and gatherers, and over time, then uh, through farming and agriculture, then all of a sudden, that produced our complex society today. But then they, then they go on to say, well, hold on, maybe that's not the case. Maybe it was warfare that was the big factor that produced all of our complex societies. And they say, mm -hmm. well, maybe yeah. it wasn't that. Maybe it was religion. Maybe it was inequality, patriarchy, blah, blah, blah. And throughout the whole article, they're basically saying it could be this. Maybe Maybe it's not that. It's very wishy-washy. Right. At, at the very end of the day, they say, well, we don't really know how, how it got so complex. So, it's, it's, so they're struggling to have the answers because they have the wrong starting point. Like Bodhi was saying, they're starting with that evolutionary worldview. They're starting with man's mm -hmm. word. And anytime we have questions of history, we need to go back to a historical document. We need a reliable historical document. And the Bible mm -hmm. is our historical True. reliable eyewitness accounts. Anytime we have a question of history, let's make sure that we're basing ourselves on the biblical worldview. Right. Well, and the, the common evolutionary history is, well, it was farming that brought society together because people mm -hmm. are staying in the same place. They start planting crops. They want to reap a harvest. So they're sticking around. So they start building buildings and, and I want to live in those particular areas. Now, here's the thing. There, there's nothing wrong with farming. Farming is great. I actually grew up as a farmer. So farming is not of the devil. Farming is not of the okay. devil. Yeah. 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 We want to clarify that. That's that. Yeah, they they <laughs> actually mentioned clear, that here in the article. So. But, you know, if you go back to, to Genesis uh, during creation, you know, God... Mm -hmm created uh, Adam and Eve, guess what? Mm -hmm. There were fields there. Mm -hmm. they, you know, Adam was to tend the, yeah. tend the garden, for yeah, example. Yeah, God told Adam to, to be fruitful it. and to multiply, to cultivate the earth, to have right. dominion over the earth. So from the very beginning, Adam and mm -hmm. his sons, they were creating farms, they were planting, they were having ag agriculture. So from a biblical worldview, it's really right. not a surprise to right. find these ancient civilizations that are, have, have this evidence of farming and agriculture. But again, mm -hmm. from the evolutionary worldview, they have the bias that humans are just dumb brutes, right? Dumb that brutes. we're, yeah, that we're evolving in our intelligence, that we're mm -hmm. becoming smarter over time. Whereas from the biblical worldview, Adam and Eve were actually pretty smart, probably smarter than all of us here today. So Yeah, and you know, if we even think of biblical history, you know, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden. God's like, go plant your own by the sweat of your brow, you're gonna work this one. You know, so you see the irony in some yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, after the flood, Noah's a farmer. You know, so I mean we see this. This is yeah, a, this over and is over a good again. example. But people are always smart. And because they were always smart, they're able to build complex societies mm -hmm. from the get-go. And mm -hmm. I think that surprises people when they look at some of these ancient cultures and uh, some of these sites, here. some of these archaeological places, and they go, wow, this is, this is pretty complex. This is right. pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look like something hunters and gatherers did. It doesn't look like something that just right. farmers did. This looks pretty amazing. That's because people are smart from the start. Exactly. 
Yep. And they make an interesting argument as you go through the article. They said, you know, it could be that the environment plays a factor in this, that during rough conditions or rough environments, that a nomadic hunting gathering lifestyle is the best way to make a living during conditions that are so unpredictable. Well, in a sense, we'd agree with that to a certain degree because post-flood, you're living in a wrecked world. You're having the effects of the flood. You have more motions causing a lot of probably huge storms, hurricanes, mm -hmm. hypercanes. The earth is settling back in place, yeah. fountains of the great deep, bursting forth tectonic activity. It's a very unpredictable place, environmentally speaking. So maybe hunting and gathering was the best way for a while. Yeah. Then after a few centuries, things settled down. They can then start to actually do planting, right. farming again. So that could really explain from a good biblical perspective this progression in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating when you just sit back and think about, uh, uh, you know, all these different aspects. Yeah, people were, you know, they fled... Uh, uh, to different places. For example, after the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. to go to different places, they're losing certain technology. They're going to act more like hunters and gatherers for a certain time until they rebuild that technology. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we see cities that were built before the flood, the city of Enoch, for example. After the flood, we see Babel, and then we see uh, different civilizations pop up uh, very soon after that, you know, whether it's Indus Valley or Mesopotamia or the Greeks or the Germans. There's a lot of different groups all uh, forming all at the same time. And as Rob, as you mentioned earlier, it's really unsatisfying. This article was really long. Yeah. And I by like the time it was like get, I just wasted an hour of my life reading this. You get to the article, like, yeah, <laughs> we don't know. It's much more complex than we thought. And I was like, well, yeah, there is a book <laughs> that can point you in the right direction yeah. and give you answers Literally, to all this like stuff. Literally, there was like 16 pages yeah. of this article. They were just going back and forth. They don't really know. And at the end of the day, they're like, we don't know. So there you yeah. go. That's our research. Well, Speaking of it's books. interesting. You know, one of the books that I had written, uh, it's called The Tower of Babel, The Cultural History of Our Ancestors. A lot of people just, they, they don't know what happened after mm -hmm. the Tower of Babel. They know people go all over, and then you see the call of Abraham in the Bible, and you kind of follow Abraham's descendants down mm -hmm. to Christ. And, of course, you see snapshots of different other cultures that are there, the Greeks, for example, or Egypt, and so forth. But uh, believe it or not, cultures all over the world kept track of their history. And a lot of that history has been thrown out. They're, people aren't taught this history anymore because it's been replaced with a secular Darwinian history. Darwin in 1871 tried to rewrite history so that we evolved out of Africa from apes because that's where you find the apes. Right. And so what they did is they took all this written history, threw it out, replaced it with Darwin stories. But you know what? If you go back and actually read that history, cultures all over the world kept track of their history. It goes right back to... Uh, one of Noah's sons, grandsons, or great-grandsons. And so I tried to map all that out and give you a lot of history in Absolutely. here and uh, a lot of archaeology from the yeah. Tower of Babel and so forth, too. Yeah. So. I Tower tell people Babel. all the time that book's a great book. It's a little deep at some points, but the payoff at the end is really worth out how it all comes together, tracing yeah. the history back to the Tower of Babel. It's really, really well done. Or well, if you don't want to read it, check out our off-the-cuff episode on the Tower of the Babel. We, we, uh, we covered kind of the uh, oh, overview. The, the gist of it, yeah. The gist of it. Big yep. picture overview there. So you can find, find us on YouTube for that. Sounds good. If we don't move on, we're going to be here for thousands <laughs> or hundreds of millions of years. <laughs> Let's get to the next article. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to move on to it, but Planned Parenthood claims virginity is patriarchal, is a patriarchal social construct. Mm -hmm. A little subtitle here. Abortion giant Planned Parenthood, who makes its money by killing unborn babies, often formed out of promiscuity, is now insisting that the concept of virginity is derived from patriarchy and is therefore bad. And so... Now, first off, is patriarchy bad? Not done See, right. we're in a Biblical, culture that, right? that's trying to teach that, saying, oh, mm -hmm. well, stuff that comes from men is bad. Well, yeah. the internet came from men. Yeah, you know? I mean, this article um, itself, <laughs> I mean, came from men. Yeah, yeah I mean, sure. it's, it's interesting, yeah. you know, when you just sit back and think... You know, like, well, what's going on in our culture? You need to understand what our culture is doing and what they're attacking uh, to step back and see what's the underlying roots, what's the foundation for this particular Because argument. what it's really attacking is a biblical framework for people, identity, right. family. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Family is coming under attack. It is. Right. The patriarchal and the matriarchal are coming under attack in today's culture. We mm -hmm. need to understand uh, those roles of husband and wife and so forth, too. So this is all mm -hmm. part of that. They want the promiscuity. They want this because, to them, it's good for business. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really no surprise that they're saying this because they make a ton of their re revenue, most of their revenue, off of killing innocent children. So, of course, they would say that. Mm -hmm. It's also just a reminder, too, as Christians, the battle for the preborn is not over, right? We say this all not the time, but because Roe v. Wade was overturned, it doesn't mean that the battle is over. It just went from one battle to now 50 different battles, and you're even seeing it worse in some states than others. And, I mean, they're even proposing laws to even after the, the birth of these children that you can legally now kill these children mm -hmm. on the operating table. So you just see the wickedness. And like Buddy was saying, it's a war against the family unit. It's a war against children right mm -hmm. here. Well, uh, I was going to say, here's a billboard from Planned Parenthood. This is virginity is a social construct. And they have this. They say the idea of virginity comes from outdated, let's be real, patriarchal ways of thinking that hurts everyone. And my first thought is, you kill babies for a living. Are you Somehow kidding me? Somehow that's not harmful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Well, there was a popular person here uh, uh, that posted on Twitter. It says, sounds like something a pedo would say. I thought, pedophile. Yeah, yeah that's, pedophile, uh, yeah. They, yeah. They probably nailed that. That's uh, Which actually in our one. culture, they're starting to push more and more about this, yeah. which is sad to see. So, you know, the key is, do you want to be sexually pure and save yourself in marriage, for example? Or do you want to be promiscuous and end up at the doorstep of Planned Parenthood? You know, and of course, they mm-hmm. want the business. They want to uh, attack children. And you know what? Yep. Uh, we, we stand against that because we stand on the authority of the Word of God. That's right. When we start yeah. with the Bible, all people are, uh, have intrinsic value and eternal value because exactly. we're made in the eternal yeah. image uh, of God. So we all have this value. Our souls are going to go on forever. And it's also very interesting. We noted backstage, kind of prepping for the show, that at the very end of the article, they give a bunch of stats about uh, marriages and who mm-hmm. does better, someone who's been more promiscuous before yeah. marriage or someone who actually waited till marriage before sexual activity. And the numbers are just so clear. Of those who are enjoying their marriage or having happier marriages, which can be a bit subjective, granted, but marriages last longer. They're mm-hmm. happier when people have maintained their purity as best, best they can until marriage. Mm-hmm. It's just how it works out. It's the way God it made close. it. It's the way it God designed it. Yeah, it's not even close. Yeah. True. Yeah, so it really was. Yeah, God's design for marriage nails it. Yeah, they say that. Found that uh, women with zero or one previous sex partners before marriage were also least likely to divorce, while those with 10 or more were most likely to divorce. So again, because it's God's design, right? We go back to the biblical worldview. That's how God designed it. So of course, mm-hmm. when we fit within God's design order, things are going to be work. There are going to be happier marriages. But of course... We don't do it just for the happier marriage. We do it because that's what God's word says, right? We're made in the image of God. We're living in God's created order. Let's live like it. I also want to say, too, it doesn't mean that if you have fallen into sin before marriage that you can't have a happy marriage. It's not saying that either. It's just showing that when you follow God's plan, that's when it works best. Mm-hmm. And that makes mm-hmm. sense. He made marriage. He made sex. He know, knows right. how these things do work best. And we've seen a lot of people, you know, who uh, receive the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. that turn from their sin. They repent mm-hmm. and they receive mm-hmm. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yep. You'd be surprised how, uh, how their life can change for the better on things like and that. And the Bible too. repeats over and over again how good of a thing a marriage is. When Amen. one man, one woman comes together, it's actually a picture of Christ and the, and church. the church. So over and over again, you see that thing throughout Scripture. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. All right. All right. Moving Alrighty. on. To, again, more bad news in a sense, universities around U.S. install morning after pill vending machines. I retitled this, Kill Your Baby for Less Than 20 Bucks, which is essentially what's happening here. Yeah, but $12.60. Yeah, $12.60 yeah. yeah. or even 7 bucks in some places. Or as low as $7. Lower. I, I titled oh, yeah. it, how, how to Kill People on College Campuses and Get Away With It. That's, because yeah. that's really what they're doing. And, and in case people is. are watching mm-hmm. this and you're not as familiar with our ministry, why are you saying killing people? Well, because we understand biblically it is a human being made in God's image from fertilization. Anytime you take that life, it is murder. That's both biblically and scientifically speaking, too. That's why we keep using that language. It's not arbitrary. It's not meant to be hyperbole Mm -hmm. over exaggerate. We are being very clear on what the Bible says about this and applying that to what we're seeing here. That's why we use that language. Our culture continually, I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard this, right? Morning after pill is just a contraceptive, right? An emergency contraceptive. And they're able to do that because they've redefined the definition of a conception. Conception Mm -hmm. used to mean fertilization, but nowadays... When the sperm and the egg come together. When the sperm and the egg come together, but nowadays they mean it to mean the implantation in the uterine wall, which happens up to two weeks after that moment of fertilization. So that's how they're, how they're able to get around it. And essentially that's what the morning after pill, the plan B uh, pill does, is it prevents that implantation. So you're essentially killing that child after fertilization. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're talking about it today. And yeah. these vending machines are being put in 39 different universities, already in 39 different universities in 17 different states, with 20 more considering them. And so this is a national phenomenon. And in some cases, tax dollars are used mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah, even in states like New York and Illinois, it says yeah. legislators are working on bills that would require state college campuses to have at least one of these vending machines. Isn't that whole, I mean, that's just disgusting. That's just, let's yeah. remember to think biblically here, guys. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. remember that this is, uh, yeah, let's just make sure that you're speaking up to your legislators. If you do live in one of these states, make sure you speak up to your legislators and say, this is not right. This is made in the image of God. This child's made in the image of God from the moment of fertilization because that's what mm-hmm. God's word says, fearfully and wonderfully made. And it also reminds me of the need of us to be sure that we're equipping ourselves and those under our charge to have a biblical worldview on these things. Mm-hmm. It actually says in the article here that one of these vending machines over in Washington, they've sold more than 640 of these pills through the vending machine, which is murdering over 600 people. And so kids are accessing this and they're using this. Why? Because they have a worldview that understands this issue wrongly. Let's be sure that we're equipping right. our kids 
to understand this issue rightly and biblically from that biblical foundation starting in God's word. Yeah, we're living yes. in a culture that devalues the family, devalues the view on children, whereas the Bible says children are blessings from the God. They're like gifts, they're like arrows in the hands of a warrior. Let's make sure that we base ourselves in that thinking. Yeah. All right. Next article, for the third day in a row, Earth's average temperature breaks record highs. And Bodie, you were just in... I was oh, in Gulf Shores, yeah. Gulf Shores, As you right? can see, he got a little bit of sun and, and he you was there. experienced this firsthand. <laughs> oh, yeah, my son was playing baseball, and it was miserably hot, miserably humid. Yeah. For those of you yeah. who are in Alabama, I have great respect for yeah. you surviving. Hey, we're sorry. We're it, sorry. Is, it is rough down there. There's a lot of areas like that. But uh, Time to move to Alaska. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Go up to northern Alaska. I'll tell you what, it was. I you know, you take a shower, you get ready. You're like, man, I feel great. You oh, walk out, goodness. and you're like, it's over. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're sweating. Your glasses are like, what happened to my glasses? I so, uh, yeah, rough. I had all sorts of issues. But, uh, no, it really was. It was hot. No, they were actually having a heat wave in that particular area right. uh, as well. But, you know, this makes the news because we're in a culture that is just, they, they've fallen in love with this concept of climate change. Mm -hmm and global warming and yeah. oh boy we're, we're destroying the earth and um, you know, sometimes we got to step back let's look at this from a big picture okay we had three days that hit our record breaking uh you know by by the way we measure this sort of thing but guess what now it went down so we're not still sitting there it's not still going up god designed the earth in such a way as to be able to handle this even in a sin cursed mm -hmm. and broken world now, there are a lot of factors involved, and sometimes, you know, people just want to automatically come over here, oh, we must have caused this, we must have caused this. But you have to remember, you know, we're in a year where uh, there's uh, sunspots. This is uh, every 11 years, there's a sunspot cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, minimum, when you have maximum, more, minimum, right. maximum, every 11-year cycle. Yep, and when you have sunspots, you know, the sun actually produces more heat, um, you know, so that's one factor. We're also in an El Nino year. Uh, you know, where, you know, those are kind of odd, you know, every four or five years, but then sometimes they stretch out. The point is, there's a number of factors that affect what's going on on the day to day. And you no, had no. a great point, too. You were yeah. talking earlier mm -hmm. about in terms of the, the level of accuracy, too. Correct. In terms of how accurate we are in terms of measuring the temperature. Right. Uh, over the last, what Technology. is it, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. we haven't been able to have this level of accuracy now. before that. Yeah, I was talking with our astronomer, Dr. Danny Faulkner, mm -hmm. a brilliant guy, actually. And, uh, you know, we were talking about how, you know, if you go back to, say, the 1930s, they didn't have measurements anywhere like what we have. Mm -hmm. Even 20 years ago, they didn't have measurements like what we have today. Right now, we can accurately measure the atmospheric temperature and the winds and the, uh, the surface temperature of the, you know, all over the ocean very well. And so what we're doing now is we're being able to measure this stuff with extreme precision and like, hey, look, we just broke this record, but we have no idea. Back in the 1930s, for example, they could have destroyed this record. Or, you know, uh, 1,800 years ago, they may have had 15 days in a row that blew this out of the water. You see, we got to think. Remember We're to just think looking vividly. at a small yep. snapshot right now. Yep. But see, guys, no, no, all that good logical scientific thinking, that's just not right because the article says this. Scientists, scientists have warned for months that 2023 could see record heat as human-caused climate change driven largely by the burning of fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, and oil warm the atmosphere. But remember, it says, while some countries had colder weather than usual. So I don't know oh, how yeah, they explain like, that. They missed that in there somewhere, right? I don't yeah. know. They just kind of missed that part, Well, not too, to mention the uh, medieval warming period. We saw 800, 1200 yeah. AD. Yeah, if you look at the long-term averages, throughout history. Right. Yeah, you see yeah. a lot of those fluctuations. And remember, we got to think biblically, right? Let's make sure we have yeah. a biblical worldview. Make sure you separate the facts from the interpretation. Mm -hmm. The facts are temperatures seem to be rising over those three days. That's it. That's the fact. Now it comes down to the interpretation of why are those rising. Right. And again, from the, the we talk about it all the time, uh, the climate alarmism is really a religion. And that's what we say all it the time. It's, it's not a neutral, uh, unbiased interpretation. It is a religious worldview. And so if you right. take that climate alarmism, they try to say that yeah, man-made, uh, right. man's destroying the earth. But again, if we go back to the biblical worldview, we have to trust our sovereign God to maintain the earth. Genesis yeah. 8, 22. He's going to maintain the, so the, the seasons and day and night and cold and heat and, and mm -hmm. winter and so summer. As long as the earth endures. As yeah. long as the earth endures, right? Right? Yeah. Um, but also at the same time, from the biblical worldview, we're, we're also called to be good stewards of the yeah. earth, right? As part of our dominion mandate, we want to make sure we take care of God's creation. But let's make sure that like with Romans 1 says, we don't worship the creation. Let's right. remember the worship of the creator. And right. I think too, as you think about this, maybe you're tired of hearing about climate change. There's so many articles coming out all the time, depending on you, you, which generation you're in, how you're thinking mm -hmm. about these things. It doesn't matter. Not a big deal. But bear in mind, it is a big deal to have good answers to this because for so many people, this is a huge concern to them. Yeah. 
especially younger generations, they've been brought up in a culture that's told them again and again and again, so the world is dying and it's our fault. And so they have a true anxiety in their thinking about this because it's not rooted in biblical reality. And so we want to give them good biblical answers on this, give them a good biblical perspective. God made the earth to be inhabited. He will sustain it until he comes mm -hmm. back. And that there are good answers to the fluctuations we see, but there's this general trend that gets back to normalcy that life will be here and we will be okay. God will sustain mm -hmm. it. But having these answers can give them peace, give them a right perspective. And then also we can point them to what they're looking for because for many in the younger generation, they're looking for purpose. They're looking for meaning. And they're thinking, wow, the earth is about to fall apart. I can save it. I can be part of what's saving the world. That's a purpose. They're putting their faith in the wrong spot though. Mm -hmm. Let's point them to the purpose. one who gives them real purpose and real meaning that can use them to save people's souls if they're obedient mm -hmm. to them. And so there's some relevant application to people as we mm -hmm. give answers on this as well. Yeah, I think a lot of times people want to put this out there and say, hey, you can save the earth. You can save the world by doing X or doing Y right. or doing Z. What we need to do is step back and realize, hold it. Yes, we did break the world a long time ago when Adam and Eve sinned. Mm -hmm. God cursed yeah, the ground. He right. cursed the animal, sentenced man to die. Yep. But he also did something about it. Jesus Christ stepped into history to take that punishment that we deserve from an infinite God, because only yeah. He could do that. That's right. And uh, but a lot of people miss that. See, I, I, I'm old enough to be part of that generation where they said, "Hey, let's stop using paper bags because we want to save the trees. And if you <laughs> save the trees, you save the planet." And so we went to plastic bags, and now I'm living <laughs> in that age where they're like, <laughs> you got to get away yeah. from the plastic bags. It's destroying the planet. Yeah. Let's go back to these paper, Just carry paper, all paper bags because yeah. those are replenishable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, now, we're, okay, well, at any rate, <laughs> yeah. you have to be careful about all these things that people say, here's what you got to do to yeah. save the world, to save the planet. Mm -hmm. Christ is already Yeah, because of the finished work of Jesus eternity. Christ on the yeah. cross, that's why we can look forward to the new heavens right. and the new earth. That's right. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Yeah. Next article. Fossils reveal how ancient birds molted their feathers, which could help explain why ancestors of modern birds survived when all the other dinosaurs died. And so this article is so wrong on so many different <laughs> levels, but they'll start by opening yeah. with this in the article. It's from Science Daily. Every bird you've ever seen, every robin, every pigeon, every penguin at the zoo is a living dinosaur. And so they're trying to figure out why some birds made it post the extinction of the dinosaurs and some birds did not. And they're thinking maybe the way the birds molted their feathers. But of course, this assumes evolution, assumes birds evolved from dinosaurs, amongst many other naturalistic assumptions. Right. So, so it's like Kentucky Fried Chicken, so Kentucky or, Fried Dinosaur. Kentucky right. Fried That's Dinosaur tastes like here. chicken. So there so. you go. Sorry, I'm just winging it here. Just the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> winging it. Good on you. All right. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that KFC joke when yeah. we're here in Kentucky. Yeah. You know, yeah. the state of Kentucky, Kentucky looks so. like, a, like a drumstick, right? A, a, it kind of does. That's, that's true. I mean, maybe yeah, that's yeah. why they that's came fair. up with it. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so are birds dinosaurs right off the bat? No. No, they're no, not. No, when were birds made? Day five. Day five of they're all the flying creatures. creatures. Yes. Yep. And dinosaurs were made on day six, six. because they're land animals. Land dwelling. So birds were actually made before right. dinosaurs, which is actually contrary to the evolutionary That's correct. Yeah, by, by definition. And when we think of like flying reptiles or uh, sea reptiles, those are actually day five creations as well. Sorry. We sometimes lump them in with dinosaurs, mm -hmm. but by the technical mm -hmm. definition, they're not. Uh, so yeah, they, they've got this wrong on so many fronts. They automatically assume Birds are dinosaurs, and so they want to call dinosaurs birds. And for those of you who don't know, they've taken all the birds out of the classification system, they and they now lump them mm -hmm. under dinosauria or dinosaurs. Yeah. So when you see a cardinal, boom, it's, a, it's supposed to be a dinosaur. Um, I, of course, I don't buy into that sort of thing. Uh, that is mm -hmm. part of a secular, humanistic, mm -hmm. religious viewpoint. That's, right. That's where evolution uh, comes from. So uh, let's step back and let's look at this from more of a biblical viewpoint. Yeah. When we start with God... Dinosaurs are dinosaurs, and birds are birds. Birds stay birds. There you go. So That's so complicated, Bodhi. It, I, I know. And now, here's the thing, though. Their research, I think their research is kind of cool. Sure. Because what they're doing is they're looking at fossil birds, mm -hmm. and they're saying, hey, these snapshots, which that's what a fossil is. It's a snapshot. Right when mm -hmm. they died, that they turned into a fossil, they're looking, hey, were these birds molting? I think that's kind of cool research. But do the fossils really reveal things, though? No, the, the <laughs> I fossil right is the, the fossil. Fossils reveal. Wait a minute. Fossils can't fossils do anything. They can't fossils say don't anything. say things. So that's right? a reification Science fallacy. doesn't speak. Yeah, that, yeah, those are reification fallacies, yeah. But yeah, they're looking at these. Hey, were these things molting? Were they, were they losing their feathers? Is really what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at this research, you know, they only looked at a few. I wish they would have looked a lot more. There's a lot of Cretaceous right. birds, birds that were buried in Cretaceous sediment. So just so you know, yes, there's a lot of birds buried with dinosaurs. 
this tons of them, by oh, the yeah. way. Um, even though their story has them changing Which cracks from one me up because the they say dinosaurs turned into birds, yet birds lived alongside dinosaurs. Mm. Makes logical sense, right? Yeah, that's very <laughs> odd. But to me, I, you know, when I look at this research, I would like to see them look at all these different birds going back there and say, hey, were they molting or were they not? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the, the handful of birds that they've seen to have looked at, they didn't seem to see much for molting um, at that particular snapshot. I looked up the Archaeopteryx. Uh, There's about 12 specimens. They were all found in uh, Germany, uh, as, I re as I understand that. None of them really seemed like they were doing any molting. I didn't see anything on that uh, in particular. They looked like fully formed wings and so forth and, uh, and everything else too. But what that could tell me, if I could find out were a whole bunch of these molting or were they not, birds tend to molt in the spring. That's when they do most of their molting. Um, you know, they do a little bit in summer. And, of course, in fall, you know, there, there's some that do that as well. I do well. a lot of my mulching in the spring. But, see, I'm thinking in terms of the Bible's history. Not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying mulching for a second. Mulching. Like, mulching. <laughs> but, see, I'm Sorry. thinking in terms of the flood of Noah's day. These are a snapshot of the flood of Noah's day. All these land-dwelling, air-breathing animals were dead by the 150th day of the flood. I would like to know, hey, was this closer to spring? Was it closer to fall? When was sure. this? You know what I mean? Right. Those are little things that we can actually look at this research and go, we can understand things a little bit better from a biblical viewpoint than the storytelling that they're doing here. Yeah, let's get back to the biblical worldview here. And it always makes me so sad with these sorts of articles because so often you'll see stuff like this. They say, we want to know how did this process talk about molting? How did it evolve? Because they think that plays a factor in who survived and who did not survive. And they're asking the wrong question, how did this process evolve? And what makes me sad about this is you got smart people who are wasting all their time and all their energy trying to answer a question that's just wrong from the get-go. They should be asking the right questions up front rooted in a biblical worldview and applying their knowledge in a right way to really search for good answers that make sense of the real world. And so they're wasting time, money, effort, resources to try to answer the wrong question, which is just a sad waste of resources in my in opinion. In any case, this is the first time you've heard this, that birds are not dinosaurs. I encourage you all to check out their website, answersingenesis.org. Look mm -hmm. it up. You can spend millions of years literally on their website. Oh, yeah, That's right. what I say, all the different articles that are out there. And of course, Bodie, the book man, has a book. <laughs> he has a book I out. do have a book. Just <laughs> release, <laughs> hot off the press. See, I told yeah, you, you're the book. Of, I wasn't just winging this. Yeah. Oh, that's for the birds. Uh, okay. okay. You stole my joke. Uh, this is actually a new book out, Dinosaurs, Dragons, and the Bible. And, you know, I've been working on this for a lot of years, you know, yep. dealing with these kinds of subjects. A lot of mm -hmm. people have questions mm -hmm. about dinosaurs from a biblical viewpoint. And, uh, you know, I really dive into that. These are some of the top questions that I get. Well done, um, yeah. Most people can read this book. I try to write it at a level that most people can have no problem with. Don't need with, a PhD. But, and, right, um, but... Um, no, it's, uh, it's a fun book. It's enjoyable to go yeah. through. So. Well, and the book gives you a biblical worldview on these issues, and that's something we point out all the time. This is a worldview issue. Which foundational authority mm -hmm. do you start with, either God's right. Word or man's? And so when you have a biblical worldview, there are really good answers that make sense of reality when you start from right. that biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand that we all have a worldview. And there's a great quote from this article. We'll wrap up move on to the next article here. But they, the secular scientists say this, in paleontology, we have to get creative since we don't have complete data sets. There you go. Translation, we've got to use our imagination to make a guess about exactly. the stuff to fit our assumptions about what yep. we are looking at. Again, it's worldview interpretation driven based on those wrong assumptions. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. That's sure we always say, separate word. the facts from the storytelling. Anytime right. you see one of these articles, make sure you keep that in mind. And look for any of the unstated biases as well. Now, for this article, I'm going to hand it straight off to Rocket Rob over there. <laughs> the earth formed from dry, rocky building blocks. So, Rocket Rob, is that how the earth formed? I don't know. I think that transition was a bit rocky over to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Again, like I was saying in the last one, always make sure you look for the unstated biases throughout the whole thing that they're assuming evolution. They're assuming the solar system evolutionary Nebular model was hypothesis. true. Yeah. That yeah. was their hypothesis. So. But right, so they, they have all of these models basically that they're trying to create and basically on their models they show that the earth formed from these hot, dry, uh, rocky materials and then the addition of the so-called life essential volatiles including water mm -hmm only occurred during the last 15% or less of Earth's formation, which is obviously uh, contrary to the biblical worldview, what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, which says the water was created in the very beginning, yep, um, and one, then two. you had land that, that appeared in day 3. So right away, you're, you're, you're seeing a, a, a difference in two different worldviews. And I, I just wrote on the very top here, I just wrote, once upon a time, 
billions of years ago, and the giant mm. disk of dust, gas, and rocky material that orbited <laughs> our young sun, and then they kind of go on and on. And really, that's all this article is, and it's just about every single one of these type of evolutionary articles. It's a lot of storytelling, so make sure you guys always separate what the facts are, what they're observing, and right. how are they actually interpreting it, going back to their models, because a lot of the times they take these articles, and they'll put something into a computer model, and they'll say it as a, just simply as a fact, right? They'll yeah. just say it as a fact. But again, models are only as good as your initial assumptions. If your assumption's wrong, your conclusion's gonna be wrong. Give yeah. you an example of this from the article. Because the formation of Earth was not instantaneous and instead involved materials accreting over time, yeah. there you go. they immediately are wrong. No, it was by the word of God. It yeah. was instantaneous yeah, in the beginning God, of the heavens God and the earth. And so their assumptions are wrong, their conclusions will be wrong. And also, it's interesting, towards the end of the article, they said the study is, crucial, is a crucial contribution to theories of planet formation, a field which has undergone several paradigm shifts, yep. changes and guesses, yep. in recent decades, and is still characterized by vigorous scientific debate. And so again, they're just doing the best they can within their world. It's on the shifting sands of man's right. opinion. You think about right. it, man's ideas, man's opinions are constantly shifting. And this is just another evidence of it. And then I, I love the, the very last art, the very last paragraph. Anytime you want to get the takeaway from an author, what he's trying to leave you with before you're done, he says, space exploration to the outer planets is really important because a water world is probably the best place to look for extraterrestrial life. That's really the, mo the main the motivating fa factor with all of these different yeah. missions. I, I worked in the NASA industry for about 10 years before I came here and get past all the fluff and stuff, get past all the media, that's Amazing. always their number one goal, their number one agenda is to find life in outer space. Why? Well, it's because they want to justify their evolutionary story, and they Ooh. don't want to believe God's word is true. Watch mm. this transition. Back here on planet Earth, here's our last article there for you. Show. <laughs> hey, that wasn't that. rocky at all. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so I want to get to this last one. It's a bit of good news. Supreme Court upholds Christian web designers' right not to promote same-sex weddings. And so there, this was a 6-3 to three ruling about the end, end of June, which basically said the creators of 303 Creative LLC website design, they could not be forced by the government to make websites that spoke a message they disagreed with, which is a big win for religious freedom and free speech. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, let's, let's make sure that, especially as Christians, let's make sure we keep speaking up. Otherwise, our rights are going to be taken away. I mean, don't let this small minority, you think about the LGBT uh, group, they're actually a very small minority in our nation, yet they, they tend to try to bully us around, and they try to make this assumption that if you disagree with them, that's somehow hate speech, and that's what they're trying to propagate mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing. So just remember, think biblically about this, and also just logically speaking, think about the double standard. Do you think the state of Colorado would force an LGBT business to promote let's say, biblical values, anti-LGBT values? No, of course not. So you see that, that yeah, their bias is right. already towards this religious view. That's what we say all the time here often is the LGBT movement is a religious view. Yeah. And so essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to push that religious view on all of us around us. Whatever that fits their agenda, that's right. what they're going to be promoting. Yeah, it's called sexual humanism. It's a subset of secular humanism. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this mindset floating around that, well, to be a company out here, you have to be secular in your nope. mindset. No, you don't. Nope. Uh, Christians have the right to be businessmen just like anybody yeah. else does. And uh, Krista, Kristen uh, Wagner here, she, uh, yeah. she stated, um, the United States Supreme Court rightly reaffirmed that the government cannot force Americans to say things that they don't believe. There you go. And uh, that was that was Yeah, amen. Yeah, let's stop for that. There we yeah, go. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think yeah. we should celebrate this decision, but let's also remember, let's not put our faith and hope in the government, right? Ultimately, let's make sure we put our faith and hope in God, who is sovereign over everything. And teaching our kids these truths from the beginning, which exactly. leads to a couple of quick yep. resources here at yep. the end I want to share with you guys. A Bible curriculum for toddlers, truth for toddlers. So we get requests all the time, do you have something for my younger kids to teach them biblical truth? This is a brand new product to do just that. So give you truth for that younger kind of two, three, four year old age group would be a great resource for them, teaching biblical truth in very engaging ways. And so excited about that. And then Bodhi's got Fearfully and Wonderfully Made here, a great book that goes through our exhibit here called Fearfully mm -hmm. and Wonderfully Made. Amazing images in here too and yep. just awesome art artwork and yeah. Yeah, it talks about the baby and mm -hmm. about life and it's development. Just, it's a very amazing. powerful, very powerful pro-life resource here. Yeah, it really is. Well done. What great coffee book for that. And then also we're coming up August 1st through September 9th. We got 40 days and nights of music for the third year. It's yeah, back wow. already. It's going to be so excited about that. So we got multiple artists. It's happening. It's a crazy time. It's super busy here during that time, but it is a lot of fun. So if you come back for that, be sure to make plans to come back to the Christian Museum and Ark Encounter for that. But that is past all the time that we have. We are so glad you're here with us. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless. God bless you. God bless you.